What's up everybody and welcome back to your favorite coding channel on YouTube. I'm back with another video and today we're going to be coding an amazing game, Connect 4. Connect 4 is one of our great childhood memories. Dropping the good old tokens or whatever you call them, chips into the slots and just destroying your friends at the game. Now what's even more fun and playing it in real life is coding it and editing it however you like on the computer. And we're going to be doing that today and here we go. This is a demo of what we're going to be creating in this two-part tutorial series. As you'll see, I have we have a game board here. We have um, I'm going to go at number A5 and then you'll see the CPU has a red chip. I have a blue chip. We can keep playing and, you know, we'll slowly stack up here so you can do B4. You know, they block me and now I have to go another route. It's going to be a super fun process, so stick around for the fun tutorial. Now, let's not waste any more time. Let's just hop right into the video. Now, in this part one of the series, we're going to be creating kind of like the interface per se. We're going to just be working on printing out the actual game board for the game and you know setting up some basic stuff and then the next tutorial is going to be all about making all the functionality the testing the just proving it out and making sure that no user can run into any intense glitches <laughs> So with that being said, let's just go right into it and let's create our project. We're gonna be calling it Connect for Python and create it. Now, the first thing that we need to do, as with most of my tutorials, we need to import our random class. And that is all because obviously we're playing the computer and the computer needs the ability to generate random numbers. Now, expanding on that, let's uh, go ahead and print a nice welcome message to our users. We're gonna say, welcome to Connect for. And right underneath that, we're gonna just have a nice dashed line to uh, kind of add some space in between that and the game board. Next, we're going to lay out the design of our game board and let's just hop into paint so I can explain something quick. Now whether you're a veteran of the game or a newbie I think it's a good idea to explain and remind ourselves of the rules of the game before we actually design our program. So Connect 4 involves a 7x6 game board that's a 7 column wide and 6 uh, row tall board that we can place chips in in each slot. Obviously we can place chips in you know anything and gravity is also a component of it as well. So for this program we need to address things like gravity. We need to make sure that if there are no chips in this area they can't just randomly place something here. We need to make sure that if there is a four in a row match here, that they win the game. And we need to make sure of some other things as well. But with that being said, let's go right back to the code and start designing our program. So based off the thing that you just saw in paint, we're going to have seven rows and they're going to be lettered rows. So first, let's create an array full of all the possible letters that the user can choose. So we're going to say possible letters is equal to and then a list. And we're going to just have each letter in a row here. So we're going to need seven total. Go ahead and paste seven and then we can just go and change each letter as we please d e f and g make sure i get all those in there now the next thing we need to do and somewhat of a difficult concept to grasp at some point but we need a two-dimensional array we need a two-dimensional array because we're going to have to have you know um columns and rows in order to do that we're going to create an array called the game board and it's going to be equal to a uh two sets of arrays here so the first brackets obviously is going to contain everything and then you need many sets of individual brackets in between that. So the first number in our game board, and what I mean by that is later on in the game, we're gonna reference our game board like this. So zero and one, and that's going to mean something. The first number is going to be which row we're at, and the second number is going to be which column we're at. Now, keeping that in mind, let's go back to our brackets here. Now in here, you need to have your initial set of brackets and then add another pair of brackets. And in this inner pair, you need to create seven empty strings one for each column that we're going to be using later on in the game. So now that you have that, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You need to put a comma and a space and then copy this six times because there are six total rows. So now that we've copied it, we're gonna say one, or sorry, that's two, three, four, five, six. And then make sure to remove the last comma here. Now, another good thing to do is we're going to create two variables. We're gonna say rows is equal to six and columns is equal to seven. Now that we have that initial part lined up here, um, I think we're ready to create a function that will actually print out the game board for us. We need this function to call on at any point in the game, um, you know, just to have an updated look at what is going on in that board. First, we're gonna say define print game board. We're going to have no inputs here. Now, this next part's a little bit complicated, so try to follow along closely with how this works because you need to get the spacing very accurate for this all to look pretty. So we first need a new line character in here, and then you need to have five spaces and then the capital A, four spaces, capital B, and then keep going. So another four, C, another four, D, and it looks like I actually missed out on space here. One, two, three, four, E, one, two, three, four, F, one, two, three, four, G. And then finally, you need one, two. Now, what the hell is all this? for you'll just see it later on then after these quotes close you need a comma end and then equal to a empty double quotes that way it just prints it all in one line and then we can keep 
continuously printing things on their own lines run underneath each other and there's no like weird spacing or anything. Now, obviously, because we have a two dimensional array, we're going to need two different loops to, you know, loop through the columns and loop through the rows. That is the same concept here in printing out the game board. So first, we're going to say 4x in the range of rows. And then the first line in here, we're going to have a print statement with a new line character. And then you need three spaces, one, two, three. And then here's the part where you actually start creating the lines that are going to make up the board. So we're going to need plus one, two, three, four, 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 plus and so on. And you guys get the point. And then that's all you need for that line. And you'll notice that if we look up here, it actually starts to wind up matching pretty nicely. And you might wonder, why do we need these spacings here? But you'll see that in a second. The next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and say print and then X comma space quotes with a space and a pipeline and then a comma after these double quotes here and then end equals the blank stuff. OK, and now I know how I just said you might wonder why all the spacings here. Well, we're printing out X and if you know X, um, it's going to start at zero and it's going to go up to five. The reason we need to print out X is because right before this first pipeline here, we're going to print out what row it is on each side. That way, the whole game board will have letters at the top and numbers going down the side so that us, the user, can easily type in, you know, A0 and it'll know what it means. OK, so the next thing that we need to do is create a separate for loop for Y in range of columns. And then here is where things get fun. Because we're printing out the game board, we also need to think about, hey, if we're printing out these empty spaces what if one of these empty spaces actually has like you know a token in it because obviously as we're playing the game we're going to fill it up with chips and the computer's going to fill it up with chips and we're going to need to print that off so that we have an updated look at what the game board currently looks like so to address that we need a few ifs and else statements here so we're going to say if the game board at x and then y is equal to and then here's where you can have a little bit of customization i'm going to personally use the blue chip emoji so if you do the windows key and then a period you can access this whole list of emojis here we can put the little blue symbol in there like that and that looks like an actual real life connect for chip so we're basically going to say hey as we're looping through the array if this particular index happens to be equal to the uh, blue chip we want to print it out to the user. So we're going to say print blank quotes here, comma, space, game board at X and Y, and then end equals space and then a pipeline. And what this is saying is like, hey, for every iteration of the column, so as we're moving from left to right, if there is a blue chip in there, we want to print it off and we need to put a space and a pipeline after the chip. That way it's nice and evenly spaced out. Now going off this, we also need to address the other case. So we need to say a lift or else if and then game board at X and Y is equal to the red chip, which you can access right here. Then what we want to do is on, honestly the exact same thing. So go ahead and take this and copy it right there. And then finally, we need an else statement. And then this is literally going to be the exact same thing. But obviously, because it's not a blue chip or red chip, it's just going to print off a blank space. And that's most of what we need for this whole function. But we're going to click enter backspace until we're just outside of this for loop here. And we're literally going to take this line that we printed earlier and then put it down here once again. So what that is saying is like, hey, basically, after this whole for loop has concluded, we just want to print off this one final line to, uh, you know, wrap the whole game board bottom off nicely. Now there is one final thing here that we need to do before we actually practice out this function and make sure that it works. We need to put a space here in this else. That way that, hey, if there aren't any chips, um, it just prints an empty space. That way it's still nicely spaced out. So now finally we're ready to test and we're going to go ahead and say print game board and then we're going to run it over here. You'll notice it looks pretty close to where we want it to be. Um, we're missing one more key element here. And guys, not only do you have to make that little subtle change here with that space, but we also need to make sure that instead of one space this needs to be one more space that way that it's just kind of how it works because these emojis are so wide and, and awkwardly spaced out you need to make up for that by printing uh, in total three spaces and the pipeline and you'll see that what we mean in a second here so we can go ahead and call our function and we'll run it to see what it looks like and guys as we run here you'll notice actually missed one other thing we need to add just a little bit more to this final line here so make sure to add four more of these spaces and a plus and then put that down here as well now we'll run it again and now we'll notice we have a perfectly nicely formatted and nicely spaced out game board and now we are ready to actually start inserting stuff into it and making this whole game work. Now, before I end up this video here, we're going to put one more function here at the bottom. We're going to say define modify turn. And we're going to intake a space picked and a turn. And then in here, it's going to be pretty simple. We're just going to say, hey, the game board at the uh, space picked 
at zero with a closing quote here and then another bracket with space picked at one is equal to turn you might not know what any of this means right now but that's okay part two will make that much more clear and this is just a nice little uh, helper method that we will use later on in the game now before we wrap up this tutorial we're just gonna have a few more variables down here we're going to say uh, return counter is equal to zero and then we're going to create our while loop that will operate the game we're just gonna say hey while it's true we're gonna do do something in here and you guys will have to wait till the next tutorial to see that so hopefully you guys are as excited for part two that i am um that's going to be coming up in the next few days here if you liked this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel for more content like this and with it being said thank you for watching once again and i'll see you in the next one